But the great news for the Tigers, their superstar Angel Reese is back, jumping the opening tip. We're underway as LSU wins it here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Certainly the matchup to keep your eye on right here. Liz Kitley, Angel Reese, we expect them to guard one another for most of this game. First jump shot off the mark by Morrow, the 6'1 junior, who's been playing so well in the absence, adding the top two players in the transfer portal in Morrow and Van Lith. And a turnover here. Crowd very appreciative of having number 10 back, Angel Reese. Here's Kitley, Elizabeth Kitley, right away with two. Really nice cross screen to get Liz Kitley the look on the right block. She loves that little fadeaway. Williams trying to feed Reese down on the post. And more out of the pack comes away with it. Kayla King with a handle there. Up with it, Amore, and that'll drop in for two. Nice touch for the 5'6 senior. Georgia Amore is terrific off the bounce. Very good with her mid-range game. Great going to her left, using her step back as well from deep. Johnson, Van Lith, Williams, Reese, and Morrow, the starting five for Kim Mulkey's team. Another jump shot off the wing by Morrow. That won't fall. The All-American. Angel Reese in heavy traffic, she'll take the hit. So that'll send LSU to the line. Reese, who is at 82%. And we'll see if there is any rust at all left over from missing actually four and a half games because she was benched for the second half of the Kent State game. So it's been since November 14th that number 10 has been on the floor for LSU. Okie's coming in at 5 and 1, LSU at 7 and 1. Tilda Eck on the drive. Up against Van Lith. Pretty good battle between those two. It's up and rolls off the iron. She'll be at the line. As number 10 is back on the floor for the LSU Tigers, the reigning national champs. Angel Reese starting the game after missing the last four and a half. Dave O'Brien alongside Rebecca Lobo. Andrea Carter with us as well. Angel got a huge hand moments ago, a standing ovation on the court with Kim Mulkey. Everything looks fine now. Morrow able to drop down to the 6-1 junior. Anissa Morrow, who's been playing tremendously well with Reese out of the lineup. Yeah, Morrow certainly looks a lot more comfortable uh, in the last four games than she did early in the season. All right, taking a couple today. What a block by Flaget Johnson. On the break, lays it up, can't finish that. Angel Reese will draw the foul. Earlier today in shoot-around, she was on the court an hour before the team got started. She got some individual work in during shoot-around. She was energized and engaged. Coach Mulkey went on to describe the team as still unpolished, but said everyone is in a good place and ready to go. And Angel Reese already with two offensive rebounds in this game. This is a player a season ago led the nation with six and a half O boards her outing it's the one thing you know even if she's not making her free throws even if she's not able to, to get her offense going right away she is going to be getting to the offensive glass Amor on the drive sealed off now back inside and a pass right there for Kitley in two I think it's really a measure of the stardom that Angel has achieved after missing four and a half games that became a national story on SportsCenter last night, it was right behind Aaron Rodgers returning to quarterback. Reese getting downstairs for two. Amor about 35% beyond the three. It's a pull-up jumper for two. Came in averaging 17 and seven assists a game. So tough to defend her. You have to respect her out to the three-point line. Kenny Brooks is talking about how teams defend her three and in and then she's gotten so good at her mid-range game as well Van Lith with a misfire there she's also getting five assists a game big board there by Reese but can't connect in close talk a little bit about Haley Van Lith of course transferring from Louisville and has she fit in yet I think it's still a process for her she's playing a little bit more point guard than she did at Louisville not taking quite as many shots She's had some big games in her career against Virginia Tech. In fact, averaging 19 a game while with Louisville against them. Beck getting in tight for two. Nice hard drive. Yeah, I'm impressed by Matilda. Angel Reese with the touch. Kicks it back out. Johnson on the drive in traffic. Lost it right to Reese. A dribble down and flips it up. That won't fall. Williams now, little fall away, and that'll drop in, a whistle, and that's going to go the other way. They are going to count that basket. It looked like it happened after the shot went up, for sure. 
Abel off the fake, gets free, and sticks the triple. What a tough shot. You saw the drop coverage on the on-ball screen by LSU, and Amor gets the defender to fly by with the pump fake. Morrow out of the double, in close, but no. Morrow will be at the line where she hits 87%. Very much a star in her own right before she ever got to Baton Rouge. But at DePaul last year, averaged 26 points, 12 rebounds per game. But those two, talking about Reese and Morrow, have barely played together yet this season. Just 33 minutes on the floor at the same time. Morrow trying to get it to Angel Reese. A little mishandle. Shot clock down to six. And three seconds. Every time down the floor when you're going against LSU. Let's bring Andrea. Well, you all mentioned Angel Reese earlier and her return. It's another big time three. Pole over the top. Reese tried to save it, but can't. Now it goes. LSU down 18 to 9. Kitley on Reese. Back to the All American, but too strong. And a foul here against the Hokies. And he's tomorrow at the stripe. She was telling us today. We had a delightful conversation with her at the shoot around. She's got a great personality. She was telling us she was a point guard in high school. Kind of hard to believe. It's only hard to believe because she's 6'1 and big and strong, and there's not a lot of players like that at the high school level. Yeah, and a ferocious rebounder. Got a couple of them. I love that she said when it comes together with her and Angel Reese, it's going to be scary. She did. Very confidently, King can't hit. Right back up for Kitley. LSU trailed Virginia Tech by nine going into the fourth quarter. Rally to win. 79-72 was the final. Morrow starting to get rolling here offensively. That was a tough shot. Ten to get off the shot, and that's going to be an offensive. No basket. That was the freshman, Clara Strack, who's 6'5". Kenny Brooks said she's going to be a great player. Not quite there yet, just at the very beginning of her career. Williams pulls up. Got a good look. That won't fall. So four points, two fouls. She had just gotten in literally seconds before the heave won't drop. Can I, can I just say what I think uh, with a couple fouls and having to sit on the bench right now that neither Angel nor Kim are happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Kitley will turn around. Stars have had some makeable shots here early on. LSU four field goals, seven turnovers. They need a hot hand. Williams lets fly around and out. They'll get a second crack at it. Johnson keeping it alive. Choppy start for LSU. And another one. Very makeable shot and a miss and another whistle and a foul on the deck. Is they're not getting out in transition, getting easy layups. They usually really flourish there. Same with the offensive boards. Even when they've gotten a lot of offensive boards, but they haven't been able to convert them so far here. Was new shot with a foul a moment ago. Morrow gets another look. She'll switch that in. Shot clock at three. Amor off the front iron. That keeps it alive. Back for the point guard with a leaner. No. A whole lot of misses for high caliber teams in the early going. Johnson came in averaging 11, also seven rebounds at 5'10. She really crashes that glass. Williams line drives it and takes the hit as well. She'll be at the line. See here, come out with the on-ball screen. Williams able to get in, score, get the and one. Angel cheering on her teammates. She's got to be talking whether she's on the floor or on the sideline. LSU picking up the heat defensively. Down to four on the clock. Here's King. Off the window, no. She gets inside for the offensive rebound. So deflating. This crowd feeds off of LSU's defensive energy as well. Kitley, too strong. Johnson leading the charge for the Tigers. They come in seven and one, lost that opener. They have ripped off seven straight wins with a lot of 100 point games in there, too, even without their superstar. Not this time for Morrow. And a whistle underneath, 7 17 to go. 
will now have 16 teams and will no longer have divisions. Check out the SEC football schedule reveal Wednesday, December 13th at 7 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. LSU had an opportunity there straight on, and that is nothing but net by Wenzel. The freshman coming off the bench, a four-star recruit. Johnson. Yes. Nice answer. Johnson who started every game as a rookie last year. A lot of confidence there as well. Tied at 23. Hamer on the drive. It opens up for her, and it won't drop. A rebound up and in, however, by Mishaw. We've seen LSU make this run by getting stops on one end of the floor, pushing it the other way, getting pretty good looks offensively. Angel Reese up against Kitley. Williams with a jumper. Got it. Nice in and out. And when Angel Reese is getting the ball, the guard on her side of the floor isn't coming with a full trap or double, but they are kind of playing halfway in between. Gives Williams a cushion when she catches it back on the perimeter. She can really nail the 3 2 56%. Up in front, Morrow, and will lay it in. And the first lead of the night for the reigning champions. As we'll take in that baseline. Kitley's open. Yes. Just about automatic. About four and a half to go here before halftime at Baton Rouge. Oh, on a tough drive will draw the foul. And we've seen that here already. That's the 11th foul that's been called on Virginia Tech so far. Only four on LSU is putting their head down and driving like we just saw from Poa there. Last year, Poa, very good foul shooter, 90%. Strack picked up the personal. LSU by two. Back over to the Tigers. Play has been choppy on both ends at times. Angel Reese got the start. Nice pass and up and in. Nice cut as well by Johnson. Great job by Angel Reese to have patience. Catch the ball. She sees that she's getting extra help. Amor. Reese on her. Kitley with a fall away. Just can't get it going yet. Another collision and a whistle with 202 to go. Gotta tell you, this is pretty amazing. Clara Strack, 6'5 freshman out of Buffalo, New York, has just fouled out with two minutes to go before halftime for Virginia Tech. That's the fastest I have seen anybody foul out of a game in years. I am stunned that she was still in after three fouls and then after four. But then that she didn't just do everything in her power not to pick up five. Sure, just stay out of the way for the rest of the half anyway. Pola at the line. Last tier, her family name from the Cook Islands, French Polynesia. Someone in our crew to count the number of sequence jackets in the crowd um, in this building. Yeah, man, have they caught on. Long jumper, Ekno. Morrow snatching another rebound. And she continues to pile up numbers here in the first half. Nine boards already. Pull on King. Coming up in the last minute before the break. Williams, 56% beyond that three point line. If she chooses to, will fall away. Got it. She has a nice touch. That was a really good job on the screen, too. She snaked the screen, got. Liz Kitley to switch out on her and then hit the shot with a little fadeaway. Kitley, no, well short, followed her own miss. She'll draw the foul. She'll be at the line to shoot two. In the second quarter, the Hokies have really gone cold. Three for 15 shooting. All-American, 2020 ACC Freshman of the Year. About a two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 35 29. And Lip tried to save it. Can't do it. Shot clock situations like that. You saw the double come up high. Able to get off a long one. And that's how the first half comes to an end. He said we missed them in the second quarter and we lost confidence. 
Then he felt like as LSU gained momentum, his team got stagnant offensively. And then he said defensively, we've got to do our work early. They got position on us, and it led to too many fouls. Rebound up and in there by Reese. It was outside the three. We'll take it inside the lane. That'll roll off the iron. Rebound. Oh, and a big block. Once again, it's Morrow defensively. You talk about their energy, their pressure. It's made all the difference. Williams with a pull-up pop drains it. And LSU is much better when they can push and get out in transition, get out in their secondary. Here's Kitley to the paint. Up and over Morrow. Draws the foul as well. Morrow just picked up foul number one. Kitley makes 92%. Has that one roll out? You notice I waited to say after the foul. I know. Shot. No jinx. Well done. A little bit of wisdom creeping in. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally. Reese on a low block and just about unstoppable when she gets it down there. Any more on the drive. She loves that shot. She makes it a lot. Really nice job just getting one step on Haley Van Lith and using it to get all the way to the basket. Kayla Williams, the freshman, she's going to be a star, I think, for the Tigers. They could not get her off the practice floor today. She'll drive that one in on a liner. She's just a basketball player. I mean, first of all, a phenomenal frame for just being a freshman. And she had the game earlier this season where she scored 42, was 10 or 15 from the floor. McDonald's All-American. Amor again using the window beautifully. Great touch there by the point guard. Sorry, she was 15 of 20 from the floor. She'll fire it again oh. from three-point land. And this is what happened. In that game against Kent State, she just got on a roll. A 15 out of 20 shooting it in that game. Everything opening up for Amor, another drive and an easy bucket. See Virginia Tech is in a zone defense now. It's one of the things that really gave LSU some difficulty in the national semifinal game. And look is open. Yes, a three. Nothing but net. Neither side shot the triple very well in the first half. Different story for the Tigers here in the second. Amor, too strong. Here comes Williams again. She'll kick it here for Johnson. Johnson on the move. And a lot of iron, but it'll roll in. And a timeout. Now, meanwhile, LSU taking hold of this one. The Hokies having trouble hitting their shots. This game was tied 27-27. LSU on plays like that, the run up by Johnson, have now outscored the Hokies 26 to 10 since then. And 12, and 12 to 0 on fast break points. They can just really push the ball from end to end and have bigs who can run. The defense triggering it. Amor, tough angle, knocked it down. Johnson trying to get in close. That was nifty. Just kept on moving. Amor. Kidley down the lane. Got that one to go. They need a whole lot more of that from the two-time ACC player of the year. Van Lith will back it away. On the drive. A very difficult angle, but banked it in anyway. Looking for a hot hand. Eck on the baseline. Out for Kane. Yes. Angel Reese on the bench. Morrow off the window. The only change you have with Morrow is to not let her catch it at the high post area. Eck going around the back, finding that lane. Pass somehow got to Kidley in the foul. Unless you got a big lead early Virginia Tech switch to a zone we we're talking to Kenny Brooks he said there were a couple of times I woke up after the sea was over in the middle of the night and thought to myself why did I switch zones <laughs> in the fourth quarter that's what keeps him up at night yep he was only able to go to the zone uh, one possession here in the third quarter and it resulted in a Haley Van Lith open three oh, Mara just having herself a night and enjoying every minute of it 15 and 13 for Morrow. Kidley has come alive a little bit here for the Hokies. They need a lot more of that in the fourth. She has 16 and 10. 
Amor is the one keeping them within distance anyway for most of the night. She'll pull up and fire and hit it. Four seconds before the fourth. And look, we'll fire it up there. The tip, no. And that's it for the first three. My Leisha full while they only played three minutes today for South Carolina. Not able to watch the game, only saw the box score, just hoping that she didn't get hurt and that it's just a coach's decision there. Terrific game right in front of ours. Van Lith on the attack will kick it and a whistle off the ball with 940 to go in the contest. And a three-second violation. Angel back in with the three fouls. Sat a good chunk of that third quarter. Right now she has 10 points and seven rebounds in her return to the lineup after missing the last four full games. Amor with the quick step but denied. Back out for King. Right now the Hokies need a succession of those to go down. Johnson bodied up and fouled by King. Virginia Tech, you see them back here in their zone defense. Johnson steps back and fires. Or another rebound, so strong under there. She loves the idea of coming in as a new player here. Another strong drive by Abor for two. She's keeping them alive almost single-handedly for stretches. See them in, in their zone defense. Oh. But Taylor Williams. Yeah, that, that's his own. LSU team is not even close to being what they're going to be by the end of the season. LSU by 15. Angel Reese wants it downstairs and draws the foul. She'll be going to the line. And Angel Reese specifically are very unselfish with each other as well. Yeah, we've seen it today. I mean, there have been times, especially early, where, where LSU didn't have a flow and was kind of had to go a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. But you haven't seen plays today where you're thinking, all right, shouldn't have taken that shot. Somebody else was wide open. When people have been open, they've been finding one another. And Angel Reese making one of two. Now, she did miss four games, four consecutive games. She was practicing with the Tigers all along there, too. Up and in Wenzel for the bucket to make it 66 to 52. How has she looked to you tonight in her return to the starting lineup, Angel Reese? She's looked really good. I mean, from, from the start of the game, she was uh, doing a great job getting on the offensive glass. She's been working hard, doing a little bit of foul trouble. And I think most importantly, it was we've seen a lot. Uh, Angel, you know, celebrating her teammates and the chemistry of this team looking very good. Burrow with the theft. Williams right back to her. Can't bank it in, wins it back, offensive board, draws the foul. Morrow gets it, Reese gets the offensive board. Like, at LSU's bigs can be relentless in transition and also on the offensive glass. Angel at the line, 82%. And, and extends the lead. And, you know, we, we talked about how Kim Mulkey said her team wasn't polished yet, and she said, you know, Virginia Tech's a little more polished. This is the same group that's been playing all season. Virginia Tech is also a team, as we see Amor going up with a mid-range, three very good players, but also they have transfers and, and freshmen, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that kind of have to learn their way in this new system. Ooh. He's working hard, can't hit it, but takes the hit. Reset the line, four for ten. I promise not to demonstrate on you. Because I want no part of it, none. And a big crowd, loving every minute of it. And we're working on a 21-point game. Kidley doubled up down low. Going back for her, and it's in and out. It's interesting to watch Morrow and Reese both going for a loose ball, a rebound. And it's just those two almost fighting for it 90% of the time. Although Anissa Morrow said she's challenged her guards. Like, are you going to get in here and get some rebounds as well? Right. Angel on the move. Johnson scrapping for it. Got it to go and takes the hit. And LSU really pulling away here in the fourth quarter. 
Again, LSU being relentless. And what do you see here? Attacking, going towards the basket, gets the opportunity at the free throw line. And that's one thing on the other end. Liz Kitley takes a lot of her shots fading away. You don't get fouls called a lot against your opponent when you're fading. And it's been a completely different story here at this end of the floor. LSU kind of goes into you and at the rim versus fading away from it. Kitley with a fourth foul. And they'll get Anissa Morrow for the first on the drive, Amor and will draw the foul. Didn't even really know about it until about 24 hours ago. Yeah, she wasn't aware of it until the press conference yesterday when someone asked her about it, and she immediately deflected and just talked about how it's a reflection of. Right now, number seven. Remember, they lost the first game of the season. It was a stunner to Colorado. Colorado's a good team, ranked number 20, but knocked them off by 14. Reese tried to get that one up there with Kitley right with her. With 4.35 to go. And a foul will be on Liz Kitley, and that's number five. So the Hokie star has fouled out. So Angel Reese at the line. Tigers welcoming her back, the superstar here tonight, who had not played since the first half of the Kent State game on November 14th. McDonald's All American, National Player of the Year at the high school level, Naismith High School All American. Won a ton of honors and stayed home. Flipped up and in by Eck on the drive. Until the Eck with a basket. And that gives her nine tonight. 74-58. Van Lip. Here's Williams outside that three. Reese coming up to set the screen. Angel Reese to spin, and she'll draw the foul. But a whole lot of effective things happening offensively for LSU. He's Shaw with a personal. For the double-double machine, and makes the pair. Angel Reese has now made more free throws than Virginia Tech. She's made the same amount of free throws that Virginia Tech as a team has attempted. Nine. Georgia Amor. Continues to make her shots. She has not been able to pull any teammates along with her in big numbers. She has 25 points tonight. Preseason all ACC and playing like it once again this year. 240 left in the contest. Tough bounce speed and up and in. Amor's three. Rebound tapped to the baseline. And it'll go the other way. That'll be LSU ball. And tonight's player of the game brought to you by Dixie Ultra. And Issa Morrow with a 56th career double-double. And at this point, 19 points, 15 rebounds. And added three steals on top of it. I mean, she's a menace on both ends of the floor as an undersized post player. Michaela Williams has played a huge role in this one, too. Shot clock's at four. Gets the shot up there and drains it. That is one confident shooter. Last possession for Virginia Tech was that Georgia Amor miss a three. She's played well today, but not shot well from the three-point line. Only one of nine. And as a team, Virginia Tech only four of 21. This is a team that averaging on the season nine makes per game. Just couldn't get it to go from deep today. That'll spin out Amor, though, with... A season I 25. And Angel Reese with the basketball. Now early in the game, it looked like this might be nip and tuck and be a very close game down the stretch, but as you can see, that did not play out. LSU ran away the early moments of the second half. And they continue to pour it on. Up over 80 points now, 82. Reese with the basket. So in the rematch of the Final Four, it won't be the same score, but it will be the same result. LSU, the defending champs, will once again knock off Virginia Tech. So the Tigers got a lot of very strong performances here tonight. 
Angel Reese with 19 and 9 rebounds. Michaela Williams 20 points and five assists, six rebounds. And our MVP of the game, Anissa Morrow with 19 points and 15 rebounds. Just gives you an idea of the balance and the talent that the Tigers have. 82 to 62. So any way you cut it, an impressive victory for the number seven team in the country. I don't think they're going to be number seven very long. And those Kim Mulkey t-shirts win number 700 being handed out on the bench. How did the t-shirts not have one little speck of sequence? <laughs> I know, that's a crime. It really is. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Bishop it in. And that will do it. LSU rolling here tonight. Kim Mulkey, 700 career wins faster than any coach ever. Talk about continuing to roll. LSU with a nice win here tonight.